Hello, welcome back. I have some more channel mail to share with you from eBay. Um, my little helper is under the weather today, so there will be no intro. Um, so we'll just get right into it. I have three paintings to share today. And again, these are from eBay. We'll do the smallest one first. This is a really pretty one. It's full. 25 by 25 and it's the really pretty bucket of sunflowers get my face out of the way so it'll focus the little butterfly I think this one's going to be really pretty and it has all three of these have the awesome packaging that I love uh, let's see 0128 is this one. So they come in the nice little bags with the red and white border on it. And the DMC codes listed. This is 14 colors. And let's see, I'll tilt this down and show you the colors. So of course, the typical Sunflower colors, greens, some browns, really pretty orange. This and this are the background, so it's like a cream and a flesh tone. A couple more browns. And we have a blue, another yellow. So it's kind of strange. There's really, wow, this is really strange. That's it for the sunflower colors. And then the rest of it is brown. So I, did, I just noticed that the biggest portion of the sunflowers are brown with the shading. But I think it's still going to be pretty. The background, I like how it's got the two-tone in the background instead of just one solid color. It'll make it look really nice. Okay. Moving you back up. Hello again. So we'll come back, put these away. And all three of these came with the same kit. Just the boat, the wax, the pen. So I'm guessing they're from the same manufacturer. But they all came from different stores. So there's that one. And next we will do this. This is one you all have probably seen quite a bit. There is a red version and the purple version and a yellow version, I think, that I've seen. And I like this one, um, even though it's a partial, because the roses will be the focal point of that. This is a 30 by 40, even though it's a partial. The background's really pretty, though. And the butterfly, you don't do. It's literally just the roses and the leaves and the stems. Um, this is L1078, which are these. The bags are really stuck together. I don't know what causes that. It's kind of weird. Not a single strip. All right, so let me move you down. It kind of smells weird. Okay, so we've got really pretty yellow, beautiful purple, teeny tiny amount of that dark purple. Look at that. That's the smallest. I don't think I've ever gotten a bag with that few of one color in it. Funny. So we've got beautiful greens. Quite a few greens for such a small partial more yellow. See, this is what the sunflower should look like, all this yellow. And then, so there's a total of five purples. And we have five yellows. And then four greens. So this is 14 colors. Again, this is the painting. Really pretty. 
So that'll go fast. This way quickly. <clears throat> Oh, and look, the, can you see that? The printing. So I bet, oh, you know what? I bet it got put away with the ink wet, maybe? I don't know. Kind of strange. It does have a weird smell. There's those. And then last for today is one I have been looking at. I, I had this in my wish cart for two or three months now. Um, probably longer than that. And it was just under $20, including shipping. Um, it was like 16 or 17 that would fluctuate um, on wish. So I hadn't been getting it because I was looking for it for a little bit cheaper because it is a 30 by 40. It is a full drill, but it is absolutely stunning. And I saw it on eBay and the ones I was seeing on eBay was just this portion. The rest of it was just printed canvas. So I kept waiting, kept waiting, kept waiting. And finally, my patience paid off. Let me move this up. And I found it just like the one on Wish. I love that. It's so cool. I love the beach. I don't go very often. We are literally in the center of the state, so we can get to a beach in an hour, hour and a half going either direction. East or west, I should say. If we go north or south, it takes a lot longer. But um, yeah, we just don't, we don't go very often. Haven't been in a long, long time. But I really like this one a lot. It's going to be really pretty. So again, it's a 30 by 40. It is V004, and it's called Beach Doors. I think. Um, 16 colors. And it's got a lot of gray on the doors themselves. But the ocean part where the sky and the ocean and the sand, it's just really cool. Okay, so get these laid out, and then I'll move you back down again. Okay, there's even some purple in this, which I really love. All right, so we've got two. I've had these colors before where they're almost, they're so hard to tell the difference in them. They're really, really similar, but they're two different lavenders. Um, this is 3371, so it's not black, but it's a dark, dark brown. Um, dark gray, a couple of browns. There's another purple here, a really cool green two blues, and then we have five, so we have a total of six grays for the doors, and then another blue. So I, there's really only three blues, but it does have the 16 colors, so it's going to be, it'll have enough of a contrast. It's going to be really cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Oops. So I've decided, I've been working on my custom. Um, I have probably about eight inches across the one top strip done. Um, I have decided that I'm going to get started on one of the smaller ones because I can't always sit at my workstation over there because um, I have a lot of back issues. So. I've decided that when I really want to diamond paint, but I can't sit at that chair because it hurts, my legs go to sleep and my arms get really sore um, if I sit like that too long. Um, so what I'm going to do, since you're here with me, I am going to set up this one because this one will go really fast. Um, so while you're here with me, I also was sent another tag by Lorma. Hi, Lorma. 
and I will pull that up and we will talk while I set up my next painting. <laughs> la, 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 la. So, tell me something. What have you been up to? Have you gotten any new paintings? And I want to say hello to my new subscribers. Thank you so much. We have gotten quite a few. I want to say almost 10 in the past week, uh, which is really, really exciting. Um, Let's see, where is that email? I just cleaned out my emails. I had like 1,500 emails in my inbox. It's crazy. But I still can't find, there she is. Okay. So this tag is just more information about me. And I will just talk while I go through and figure out which drills go where. I won't like talk you through what I'm doing because I've done that in a previous video so if you would like to see that um, go down below it shows my whole setup of how I get started and the crinkling hopefully won't be too distracting is the right one? is the right one? Wait, yes okay so the first question on the tag from Lorma is what is your full name? my birth name is Marjorie Lynn Reinecke, of German descent. Um, yeah, try learning how to spell that as a kid. It was a nightmare. Took me forever. That's a really long name for a little kid to write. Just a minute. Love my iced tea. What does your name mean? Marjorie um, is um, the, the most common definition that I've seen for Marjorie is pearl, and it is Greek. I don't know. And the funny thing is about my name um, is it's mainly Latin. I mean, you see more people named Marjorie that are Latin, mostly um Puerto Rican, and um, I've met maybe four or five Marjories in my whole life, like personally met. I found more online, but um, like face-to-face -face meeting, I have met, in my 44 years, I have met less than half a dozen people named Marjorie. Most of it is Margaret. <clears throat> so it's not a very common name. And the next question that I have been asked is, are you named after anyone? <laughs> this is a funny story. My father is a huge fan of old time country. It's what I grew up on. It's, um, you know, the Oak Ridge Boys, Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty, um, all those people. My mind has just gone blank, so I can't quite think of, of any other names right now. But Loretta Lynn is my father's all-time favorite country artist. So, the whole time during my mother's pregnancy, now mind you, 44 years ago, you did not get ultrasounds uh, the way we do today. So, the doctor guessed that I was going to be a boy. So the whole pregnancy, my parents had decided that I was going to be Edward Leroy Jr., named after my father. So they were all, you know, gung-ho over, little Edward coming around. And I come out, the doctor says, you've got a girl. And they went, what? So then they were like, well, what do we do now? They couldn't think of a name. So they went back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what they wanted to name this surprise child. And um, they couldn't agree on anything. So my mother told my dad she was going home, I think, the next day. And, of course, they're not going to let you release not release the child without signing the birth certificate, having a name and all that stuff. So 
And my dad left that evening to go home. <laughs> my mom said, do not come back to this hospital unless you have a name for this child. So he said, okay, fine. So he came back with Loretta Lynn. Well, I think that was, well, I got ahead of myself. I think that was like the first thing he said was, we're going to call her Loretta Lynn. And my mom said, oh, no, we aren't. And my dad said, yes, that's a great name. Mom said, no, we're not naming her that. So that's when the argument happened of her saying, do not come back to this hospital till you have a name for this child. And it is not going to be Loretta Lynn. So dad goes home. He's racking his brain, trying to figure out what he's going to name his new daughter. And he decides he's going to get out the phone book. Yeah, the phone book. He starts flipping through pages in the phone book. Just looking for something that catches his attention. And he found somebody by the name of Marjorie. And he thought, oh, that's a really cool name. I like how that looks. So he went back to the hospital the next morning, told my mom, I have the perfect name for our new daughter. It's going to be Marjorie Lynn. So my mom agreed. She liked it. Um, the only thing is, is the hospital did not listen when she gave her the spelling of my middle name was supposed to be L-Y-N-N. They put L-Y-N-E. They did this to my sister, too. My sister's name is Carla. She was supposed to be Carla with a K, but they screwed up at the hospital, so she is Carla with a C. I guess back then it, I don't know, it's weird. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's how I got my name. So I'm named after somebody. Don't know who she is. Never met the woman. Don't have a clue. Middle name comes from Loretta Lynn. So that's my funny story. I think it's hilarious. So um, I probably would have been Lori, I'm guessing, if I my dad had gotten his way. I would have grown up a Lori. Do I look like a Lori? I don't know. Do I look like a Marjorie? I don't know. But um, as far as the shortening of my name, uh, that happened. I was always Margie, M-A-R-J-I-E, instead of G-I which, of course, made it difficult for everybody again because um, everyone wanted to spell it with a G and it was a J and ugh, it was a nightmare. So when I was in eighth grade, yes, I was in eighth grade, I was in band. I played the clarinet. And my band teacher misspelled my name one day. Or for some reason left off the E. I don't remember the whole situation, how, how that came about, but he wrote out my name for something and left off the E. And I was like, ooh, I like how that looks. So from that day forward, I have been M-A-R-J-I, Margie, which again, really confuses people because they can't figure out how to pronounce it. I get called Mar Mary a lot or Mari. I, I don't know. People are kind of weird when it comes to names, but you know, there are so many different pronunciations of things and ways to spell things and made up names nowadays. So I've kind of gotten used to it. I just automatically spell my name for people or I'll just hand them my driver's license. Say it's much easier if you just look at my driver's license. Um, let's see. I'm almost done finding the colors. So, <clears throat> okay, I forgot I had to get my labels. I had to go get my labels for my boxes. Um, okay, so where was I? Does your name make any interesting anagrams? I don't think so. My brain doesn't work that way. So we'll move on from that one. I don't know. Let me know if you can come up with any anagrams for my name. That would be cool. Um, 
If I had to change my first name, what would I change it to? I don't know. Um, as a kid, I probably would have had half a dozen things that would have changed it to, but I've kind of gotten used to it. Um, maybe the only thing I would do differently is go by Lynn, just so it was more common. Um, I've because I have one of those names where you never find your name printed on anything. And even Lynn, L-Y-N-E, um, you never find it spelled that way. So that's probably what I would do differently. I would go by Lynn. I wouldn't really change my name. Um, where am I from? I'm from Kentucky. I was born in Kentucky. lived there for the first 11 years of my life. All of my family, except for my parents, are still in Kentucky and Ohio, um, which I really, really hate. But we came to Florida when I was 11. My dad's, the company that my dad worked for um, shut their doors. And he decided, well, this is the perfect time to start over. And at the time, my mom's parents, uh, my mom's mom and stepdad, uh, lived down here the majority of the time. Um, they would travel back and forth. So we ended up down here near them. And then they ended up going back. So it was like, thanks a lot, guys. You left us. So um, I was born in Kentucky, lived there for 11 years, and then the rest of the time I've been in central Florida. And like I said, we're like literally smack dab in the center of the state. And um, when we first moved here, we moved to Seminole County, which is about an hour or so south of where I am right now. Um, I have lived near Disney for a time when I first got married, um, got together. We lived in a, in a neighborhood that was literally um, in Animal Kingdom's back door. So every night we could hear fireworks from Animal Kingdom and we got to deal with all of the traffic tourist traffic that was not fun okay I've just come across a double sticker I have two of the same number on my list it's weird 3371 3371 3371 just threw me for a loop here Okay. Weird. Anyway. Confused me. I confuse easily. They shouldn't do these things to me. I just folded the corner of my label. Dang it. Uh, let's see what's next. Who did I look up to growing up? Um, I think I really had anybody. I was by myself a lot because it was just my mom and dad and me. Um, I had some friends that I went to school with, of course, but no one was really, I didn't have anybody in my neighborhood. So I was just, I don't know, I didn't really, can't think of anything. My best characteristics? That's a hard one. I don't know, I think I'm funny. Is that a characteristic? Um, I think I have great eyes. I used to have really nice hair. It's not so great anymore. Um, it's a lot frizzier, which annoys me. I don't like that at all. I've always hated that I have naturally curly hair, um, but I have come to love it now that I have a really good hair straightener that I can straighten it. Because when you have hair like this, you have to wash it every day for it to look nice or halfway nice. And you have to put a lot of product in it so it's not like scary like right now there is nothing no product in my hair um, this is freshly washed so that's why it's like this because if I take it down it's we're talking like Medusa scary so yeah um, what are your favorite things about myself? My favorite things about myself would, 
probably be my eyes. That's probably what I get the most compliments on is my eyes. Um, I love that I am very creative and crafty. I can do a lot of different things as far as that is concerned. And I think I do a pretty decent job of different stuff. Um, you can see here are two of my paper projects. I love doing 3D paper projects. Um, back here is a collage that I did with a really good friend of mine, um, which is one of my favorite pieces. It's on MDF board, and we just used Mod Podge and different scrapbook papers from the company Stampin' Up! And then I added some three-dimensional um, charms and what else is up there? Some fabric flowers and things like that. So just to make it more dimensional. Um, and then of course you can see my new, where is my finger? My new bedspread that I just finished. I've been working on those squares um, pretty much all year. I would buy a skein of the yarn here and there, two skeins here and there, um, when the, the yarn was on sale or whatever. So I just finished that a few nights ago. So I've been taking my time on that because I had, didn't really have the money to buy all the yarn. Plus, my local Joanne doesn't carry more than like four, four or six skeins at a time. Um, so yeah, I think I'm pretty good at crafting. And there's crazy, crazy butt back there, this cat. She is deaf, stone deaf, and she is a troublemaker. But anyway, I digress. Um, which of your parents are you closest to? I'm pretty close to both of my parents because, you know, like I said, it's just been us um, for the majority of the time. And I talk to my mother more, mainly because my dad is like more of the silent type. But if he and I are alone or whatever, if we go out somewhere, um, we talk. So I, I am... I'd say I'm closest to both my parents. There's not one that's... I can tell either one of them anything and be comfortable with, you know, knowing that they're going to be supportive or whatever. My grandparents, and actually my parents, they have been married for 52 years. They just celebrated their 52nd wedding anniversary um, last week. I'm looking at the date. Yes, last week. Um, so they have been married for 52 years, which is pretty cool, I think. My next question that I have are, are your grandparents still married? Well, sadly, my, both of my dad's parents have passed away. Uh-oh. These colors don't match. It's quite a difference. Time out. This is not good. These colors are way too different for me to mix them. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Eh, I don't like that at all. So, um, my dad, as I was saying, my dad's parents have both passed away. His dad died 30... 39 years ago. I was only five, so I have very little memories of him. Um, my grandmother passed away. I've been trying to think recently, been trying to remember how long she's been gone. Um, and I honestly cannot remember the year that she passed away. She lived with us, with my parents and I, um, before I got married for quite a few years, probably 15 years, 10 years, they, she lived with us. And then she got to the point where she needed to go into assisted living. So they took her back up to um, Ohio to be near her, one of her, one of her daughters. And then that's where she passed away was in a nursing home. Um, my mom's mom is still alive, 87 years old. She has, sadly, she has buried three husbands. My mom's dad died when my mother, 
have another. Ugh, these don't match either, but I'm mixing them because this is for the sunflower and it will be okay. Um, my mom's dad died when she was four. So I never got to meet him. Um, my grandmother remarried several years later um, and brought in. He brought in several children. So they were married for a long, long time until he passed away. And then my grandmother remarried quite a few years later. Um, another man who has since passed away and he's been gone. Okay, I'm having really bad luck with these colors. That's three colors now that don't match exactly. Um, but the shades are, are, these last two are okay that the, I can mix them where it'll, I can get away with it. But anyway, um, so he's been gone, I want to say 10 years, 12 years. And she lived with one of her daughters up until the time her daughter passed away almost five years ago I think so she has just moved into an assisted living facility um, only because she's really lonely living on her own she is I mean think about it she's 87 years old and she has been married her entire life and had her kids and everything um, she did so it's only been, you know, four, maybe four years since my aunt died. So she's had a really rough time being alone. So we're really glad that she's moving into this place because it's one of those really cool facilities where you have your own apartment. But it's, I guess it's kind of like a hotel where you've got, she's got a movie theater, she's got a gym, she's got um, a common area, there's a, a kitchen down like where everybody can come congregate that can make meals together whatever um, so it sounds like a really 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 cool place um, so I think she's gonna do really well there she is still in really good health um, we have really good genes in our family and she did you would never guess she was almost 90 years old if you look at her she's incredible she's an awesome woman probably the strongest person I know. I don't think I could live through burying three husbands and the last one almost killed her. She, she had a really hard time with my papa because he was the only one that I knew because the other two passed away before I came along. Um, so it's been, my mom's had a pretty rough, pretty rough upbringing childhood as far as grief goes. She lost two brothers. One, um, they both were in Vietnam. They both came home. One came home in a wheelchair um, and he was never the same. He um, he was in a lot, a lot, a lot of pain and he was just not happy. So he didn't last very long. And then her other brother, stepbrother, um, drowned in the Ohio River. He was fishing with a bunch of friends and they were drinking and having a really good time and someone decided he was going to walk the rail, fell over, very intoxicated. My uncle jumped in to try to um, help him get back on board and he ended up pulling him under. So they both drowned. So that was pretty traumatic. I was, I think I was five or six when that happened. So he's been gone a long time, but, um, so yeah, that's about my grandparents. Um, what relative was important to you growing up and why? Um, I spent a whole lot of time at my grandmother's house, my dad's mom, um, because she watched us when my, while my parents worked. She was our, our daycare, I guess you could say. Um, so I was really close to her when I was growing up. My One of my dad's sisters, I spent a lot of time with her also. We called her Aunt Bubby. Her name was Mobile. Um, I spent a lot of time with her too. So those two were probably the most, the relatives I had the closest relationship with when I was young. One thing that you've never revealed to your parents. I 
I don't think I have any secrets from my parents. Yeah. I can't think of anything that I have kept from them that's, you know, it's major. Um, what would your parents have named you for the opposite gender? I got ahead of myself on that one. I already told you that. It would have been Edward Leroy. Junior. Uh, my best physical feature, I talked about that already. I think it's my eyes. My biggest accomplishment is my daughter. Yeah, definitely. My biggest fear. My biggest fear. Um, I hate bridges. Like, seriously, hate bridges over water. Um, mainly because it started when my uncle drowned because they did not find his body for quite a while and we had to drive over the Ohio River a lot so it was really traumatic knowing that he was somewhere in that water um, and I was afraid that the bridge was going to collapse and I would be in the water too so as a six-year-old five six-year-old kid it's um it's stuck with me and now I just have a really big fear of a bridge collapsing which is in the news periodically. It has happened. Um, when we moved up here to this county where we are now, there was a bridge. There's a bridge that's not far from here that um, we would have to drive over. And it's 60 plus years old. Not very high off the water. But it's really deep. And there's a lot of alligators in the lake. So that's like something that always worried me. And, and with the bridge being so old, you could feel, you know, the bridge moving. So I hated driving back and forth to work every day on that. It was just, I hate it. That's, that's one of my biggest fears. Um, as far as a more rational fear would be spiders. Yeah. I really, really hate spiders. They really, I don't know. I just have this. It's kind of irrational in this sense. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even say this out loud because it makes me sound like a crazy person. But um, I, I can't, I have a really hard time killing them because I'm afraid they're going to come back and haunt me. In my mind, spiders are evil. Right up there with snakes. So I have a funny story I can tell you about spiders. All right, so I decided I would start while well, I keep talking because that way y'all aren't just staring at my face. At least it's something somewhat to do. Hopefully you can see this good enough. Move these out of the way. That's much better. Okay, so what was I telling you? Oh, the spider thing. <laughs> I laugh at myself because I know it's totally crazy. But at the same time, I am just like, terrified um, when I see one and when we lived in the house previous to this one we used to have wolf spiders now if you don't know what a wolf spider is google it because these things can be the size of my hand they are gigantic they are aggressive and so when we lived in this old house, my husband was working still. And he worked the 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. shift. So I was home alone at night a lot. So I would come home from work to an empty house and I'd be sitting there watching TV at night and all of a sudden one of the cats would be like high alert. So that, that my first instinct was to pull my feet up, jump up on the couch or the bed, wherever I happened to be, and look at the floor. And sure enough, it would be one of these god-awful wolf spiders. And I'm not kidding you. They were gigantic. I mean, they ranged from the size of a quarter literally to the size of my hand. These things were gigantic. They're awful. And they like to run at you as an intimidation factor which is adds to my 
irrational fear because, oh my gosh, this spider is coming to take my soul. So there were more than one occasion, and they we had a, a large entertainment center that was, it's really high up, it's got, you know, feet. So it's not flat on the floor, probably about three inches off the floor, it, it sits up high. So these spiders like to run under there to get away from me, or to get away from the cat. So this spider would be loose in my house. And I was alone until 3 a.m., sometimes later if he got a late call, whatever. So <laughs> there was more than one occasion that I would grab my cat, go into my bedroom, take her litter box into my bedroom, her food and water into my bedroom, and shove a towel under the crack of the door. And I would call him on the phone and tell him, there's a spider loose in the house. This is what I've done. I'm barricaded in. Find that thing before you go to bed, please. Um, and kill it. Because I was so afraid that it would crawl on me at night or it would bite my cat and hurt her. You know, I mean, I'm telling you, it was it's a mess. So, that we actually built that house. And when we decided we were moving because we didn't plan we didn't factor in a child into that house so it was too small for the three of us and you know all of my craft stuff and her stuff and you know anyway so I was really really sad when we decided we needed to move but then the spiders came into mind and thank God we literally moved like six miles away to the adjoining town and thank God I have only seen one of those spiders in my room and that's the one Emily mentioned in the last video um, and I was so proud of myself because I was able to step on it and then suck it up in the vacuum cleaner that's another thing my husband just thinks it's hilarious he laughs at me makes fun of me because I cannot pick them up if I can manage to squish it I have to go get the vacuum cleaner and suck it up into the vacuum cleaner because I can't touch it. I can't get that close to it. And used to, I would, um, in how in the other house, I would spray them with hairspray. I mean, there was one time where I emptied like half a can of hairspray on this thing because it just kept moving. And then when it would quit moving, I would suck it up in the vacuum cleaner because I, lit I couldn't get close enough to squish them. They were just so big. Oh my gosh, they're huge. So that's my biggest fear, is spiders. Yeah. Now, small spiders, I can kill, no big deal. Like, from the dime size down, I can, I can kill those. But when they start getting, like, the size of a quarter and, and bigger than that, I it just terrifies me. I have... Yeah, I, yeah, anyway. Um, so what else can I talk about while I'm painting with you guys? Can you see this all right? Is it too bright? This light is like really, oh, that's, yeah, that doesn't make any difference, does it? <laughs> oh, are you hearing the thunder outside? Can you hear that over my constant babble? I'm telling you, this summer has been nothing but rain 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 which i'm really not complaining all that much because that means we would do we don't have to worry about hurricanes last year we got hit by irma and that's was not fun it was right over top of us it was the worst night of my life i've been in florida for 30 years 33 years and I have never experienced anything like that in the whole time we've been here. It was definitely the worst storm that came through our area. Um, now, we've had bad storms, and we had the year when we had three right in a row, like literally back to back, which was pretty bad. But they were not as strong, and they moved a lot quicker. Um, that was back in 2004. So it's been 14 
14 years since we've had a bad storm. And yeah, hurricanes are, thankfully it's just a season that comes and goes. But this summer has been so much rain, so many thunderstorms. I mean, and we're talking heavy rain. When we first moved to Florida, um, I had to ride my bike to school. And I can't tell you how many afternoons I rode home in the rain, but it would be over and done with and sunny again in, in an hour. So, and I, it was, you know, it was no big deal as a teenager. Who cares? Well, I'm not really a teenager yet, but preteen, whatever. But the, the rain would come and go and you would have the sun again. And this summer, it has just been like rain all day, clouds all day. You just, it kind of ruins any plans of trying to do anything outside. So it's been kind of depressing. It's really like wearing on me all the rain. But we are close to the end of August. We still have quite a ways to go before hurricane season is over. But I am confident that we do not have to worry about any major storms coming at us. I mean, we haven't even really had a tropical storm come our way. But some of these rainstorms have seemed like a hurricane <laughs> because they've just been so severe, so strong. That's a little bit better. You can see a little bit better. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm over the rain. I'm ready for a little bit cooler. Plus, you know, it's been 100 degrees almost every day. It's, you know, 90 to 100 degrees. And the real field temp is, you know, right up there. So the humidity is bad. The only good thing with all this rain is you can walk outside and you don't suffocate immediately. Sometimes the heat is just so bad, it just, you walk outside and it takes your breath away. But I have not been outside very much at all this summer. So I am still just as pale as I was in January. Because I am not a fan of sweating. When I get hot, when I get overheated, I get sick. So I don't, I don't go outside very often, which drives Emily crazy because she loves to be outside. But I just, I can't handle it. My body is, and you'd think I'd be acclimated to it living here as long as I have, but I think my, as I age, my body has really changed a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm not a fan of the heat. I don't go outside a lot. Oh, let's see. What else can I talk about? <laughs> I'm running out of things to say. I feel like I've talked for a long time. You guys should be proud of me. I have a hard time talking about myself. It's I have to be in the right frame of mind, I guess. Um, yeah, so I have officially, finally, stopped my eBay craze. So be very proud of me for that. I made the last payments. I was waiting till all the, I had like six or eight auctions that were ending within like a day or two. So I waited and I actually won a lot more than I expected to, which was really surprising. But I did find some things for Emily for Christmas, just little things. I'm not going to say because she likes to watch these videos. <clears throat> so anyway, I was waiting for the final auctions to end. So I paid everything all at once. And it was like $20. And of course, on the bank account, it shows up as individual, you know, 50 cents, $3, $2, $4, 60 cents, you know, all this, all these payments show up. So my husband comes to me and he says, I thought you said you had a handle on this. And he's like scrolling through the bank account on his phone. And I said, well, you'll be very proud to know that I do have a handle on it and I am done. And the majority of that last purchase was for your daughter. It wasn't diamond paintings. <laughs> he rolled his eyes and looked at me. And so I had to get my 
phone and open up my eBay app and show him that I was not bidding on anything. And I am proud of myself. I haven't even been looking through the auctions because that's how I got in trouble. I would just go in, I would see the newly listed, and I was, I was like, oh, this is pretty. Oh, that's pretty. I like that one. Let's see how much this goes for. That was my, that was, those were my main thoughts. I want to see how much this sells for. So when I want it, I'll know what to bid for it. Well, when you place a bid on stuff, they don't always, you don't always get outbid. So that's how I got into so much trouble on eBay. But I'm proud of myself. I'm not, I'm resisting the urge. That's another reason I'm starting this painting um, now because, whoops, ah, I'm stuck. Did you see that? I just did nine in a row. You really can't see that. I picked a wrong color. I'm sorry. I picked the wrong color to start with. I should be doing another color. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, because I have so many still coming and so many already here. I decided that um, I would break my rule of only doing one at a time. Um, and the custom, the custom is going really well. I'm really liking the square drills. But I'm a little, I'm a little nervous because there's no white. And Tigger had a white chest and white paws, so I'm, I'm kind of concerned that the colors are going to be weird, but the um, person that I bought it from asked me to keep working on it and go get a little bit further before I decide I didn't like it. There is a wrong, wrong color in there, so I had to pull that out. Okay, so I'm moving on to a, a brighter color for the sake of your eyes because I'm sure you guys are like going crazy screaming at the, or you're screaming at the monitor saying, I can't see anything. Plus, I should be on the other side too, because I'm not. Let's see if I can do left-handed. See if I'm ambidextrous. Look at that. Look at that. This will go a lot slower this way. But anyway, so um, since I have so many, I didn't want to waste two or three months of constant work on the custom when I have all of these other paintings that I can be doing. So I decided, um, yeah, I can't do that. It's too, too, uh, makes my brain, I have to think too hard so I can't talk and do it at the same time. So I decided, I don't even remember, did I already say this? I don't know if I finished my train of thought, but I decided that I would work on the smaller ones also at the same time plus these are round all the ones that I've ordered from eBay are round so I can sit on my bed and watch TV when I need a soft place for my back and I can still diamond paint if I don't feel like crocheting um, plus I can get some of these done because a lot of these I want to give as Christmas gifts so I need to be working on them so I have my gifts done. I've been talking to the people that I give gifts to, you know, here and there and mentioning, you know, hey, you should try this. And they're all like, yeah, no thanks. So that was my first thought was I could give the kit to them as Christmas gifts. But most of them have not expressed any desire to do this. Um, they say it's too tedious, too small, um, not their style. So I figure I can do the painting, frame it, and then that will be a really nice gift. So I've already got three, three paintings completed and framed, ready to be given. Um, this one I will probably keep for myself, but I really want to see how it turns out, so that's why I decided to start it. <clears throat> because the picture is so pretty. And when I saw the canvas, <coughs> excuse me, I thought it would be okay. The butterfly is a little worrisome. 
I don't think the butterfly is going to end up looking like a butterfly. But the thought on that, <clears throat> which I think will be kind of cool, is buying, you know, they, they make the feather butterflies in the craft stores. I could buy a couple of those and add them to the top of the frame, you know what I mean? Like put the butterfly, the, the craft butterfly on the glass right over this. Um, and that will add to the dimension of the piece also. That's just a thought. And, yeah. So I don't know, do you think that'll work? If I put a craft butterfly on the glass? It'll make it harder to keep it clean. Um, but if it's not good, it can always be taken off the glass. Which is, you know, adhesive comes off glass pretty easily if you use the right stuff. But anyway, so I think I'm going to sign off because my throat is starting to sound weird. So I'm wondering if I'm getting Emily's crud. Yeah, it's funny. I think last year we went bowling. Bowling is something I keep saying we're going to do more of, but um, we don't. And I even get the one of the local bowling alleys there. Well, it's actually any bowling alley. But you can get two free games a day through the summer by signing your child up. And I've signed her up the last two years, and we have yet to go once. It just seems like there's always something else going on. But the last two times that we have gone bowling, she has ended up with a cold afterwards. So it kind of makes me more leery to not go to the bowling alley. And I was just thinking about that earlier, that it's been about a week since we were at the bowling alley, and here she's coming up with snipples, which really sucks. So she's got a sore throat and a headache and stuffy nose. And now I'm starting to sound. So hopefully it's just from talking for the last almost hour. Because um, I really don't talk a whole lot <laughs> during the day. Um, yeah, I usually I don't say a whole lot at all. So anyway, I thank you so much for joining me. And I will keep coming in. Um, the next video I'll do, um, I'll do some work on the custom. And you guys can see my progress on that. And um, so and, uh, put any questions that you have for me in the comments. Um, I would love to hear from you. Your feedback, your thoughts of what I, things I said. If you think I'm absolutely crazy and irrational. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I laugh at myself all the time because I know most of my little quirks are really irrational fears. But, you know, most most fears, I think, are irrational, aren't they? Um, unless you've actually been through something and then, you know, you're traumatized and you have that fear of that situation again. But, you know, for me, thank God, nothing really tragic has ever happened to me. Um, in my life, you know, I've lost loved ones and things like that, but nothing, I don't have any, you know, major accidents other than um, when I was five years old, which probably explains some of my irrational thoughts and behaviors, brain damage. When I was five years old, I, the playground were of my elementary school, the majority of the playground was on blacktop which now that I've looked back at it is really odd. The swings um, and the, the big tall slide, the biggest slide was on asphalt. And oh, I lost a drill. When I was in kindergarten, I remember climbing this ladder for the slide. I remember getting to the top and I remember sitting down and looking over the side 
of the slide. And then I remember being on the ground and my teacher telling me or asking me what happened and not being able to tell her. So what it turns out, I fell over the railing on that slide and landed on the top of my head, she told my mother, um, on the asphalt. Now here's the crazy thing. Now keep in mind this was in 79, 1980, somewhere around there. They took me to the nurse's office. Now I had to have lost consciousness because I don't remember. But, um, and I remember my teacher being at the base of the ladder when I started climbing the ladder. So, I mean, she was close by, which I guess is why she knows I landed on top of my head. But anyway, they took me to the nurse's office in the school, put ice on my head, and had me lay down. Now, this was recess, um, which was after lunch. They kept me there, did not call my mother, did not call my dad, did not call my grandmother, nothing. So we lived in a very small town in Kentucky. The buses dropped off at all three schools. The same bus would drop off at all three schools. So my sister and I, even though we were seven years apart, we rode the same bus. So they would pick her up at middle school and then come to the elementary school to pick us up. So she, thank, thankfully, um, our bus driver knew all of us. So he realized I wasn't there. My sister was wondering why I hadn't come on the bus yet. So he told her, go look for your sister. So she went to the office to find out where I was. And I was still in the nurse's office. Now, keep in mind, I do not have any memory whatsoever of being in the nurse's office. I do not remember her coming in looking for me. I do not remember the bus ride home. I don't remember anything else. So the rest of this is all from them telling the story, you know, um, over the years. So my sister was told what had happened. She was allowed to take me on the bus and go home. And my mother, my parents didn't get home until, you know, we we were home alone for several hours before my parents came home from work. So when my mom got home and found out what had happened, it was too late to call the school. So she called her boss and said, I'll be in late because this has happened to my daughter and I have to find out what on earth so she went to the school the next day and raised all kinds of cane, wanting to know why she wasn't called. And they told her, since I was conscious, they didn't think it was a problem. But I, had, I literally have no memory of any of that stuff. So I don't know if I was conscious or not, being five years old. Um, but that has affected my memory. I believe and it also brought on seizures I had epilepsy for from the age of seven until 20 early 20s I had my last seizure in my early 20s so I'm pretty sure that that episode of falling on my head has done some serious damage as far as that goes not to mention every time you have a seizure you lose some brain matter, um, little parts of it, of, of it die. So I have to remind myself a lot that some of my irrational behavior, some of my anxiety could be brought on from that. So that's my horrendous, scary story that is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. So I, like I said, I will close now. I will go... Here is the progress. Let's move this up so I can get a better angle. Hi again. 
So there is the progress. So this is going to go really fast. And I will talk to y'all next time. So again, keep subscribing. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the painting will be. The giveaway will be when we hit 600. I'll wait till we get there. Um, I have decided it is on its way. So let's get to 600 subscribers and let's get that painting raffled off. And I will see y'all next time. Please leave me a comment. Um, I love reading them. Emily loves reading your comments as well. And um, we'll see you next time. Have a great one.